G'day folks. What a magnificent afternoon. The problem is we've had too many magnificent afternoons. We need rain and we need a bad. It is so dry up here at the moment. These creeks are so low. They are lower than the great Satchmo's voice, Louis Armstrong. I've seen skies of blue, blackberries too. They must be saying I love you. <laughs> Actually, it's quite cloudy today. The skies aren't even blue. I've seen trees of green and clouds of white. I hope the trout are biting tonight. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. That's how low the creeks are, folks. They're really, really low. They're baritone low. They are very low. So we need some rain. The good news is many of the streams are still flowing. Some of them have dried up sadly, not all like, just a few. There's a few that have gone underground, so there's water in the pools, and those creeks tend to hold fish. The fish go into the, the deeper pools, as we might call refuge holes. They go in there to seek refuge through the drought, then when the rains come and the creek flows, the, the, the trout get active again. This particular creek I'm fishing today is, is flowing, but it's flowing very low. So I'm going to be using crickets for bait. I, I enjoy bait fishing for trout, and I enjoy drifting crickets. The problem is, in my shoulder bag here, I've only got half a dozen crickets, so I was running a bit late. You can see my crickets kicking around in there. But I should be able to find more. There's still quite a few around at the moment. Now, I want to bait fish for trout, but the creeks are low. They're very low, and they're quite clear. So I'm not going to put worms on, because there's no worms there. Once, once the autumn rains come, the weather breaks, and the, the ground, these dusty roads become muddy, the worms work their way to the surface, then they get washed into the creek, then there's worms there, and then we catch fish on worms, because the worms are already in the system. If I put a bunch of worms on now and flick it into some of these deep pools, the trout are going to look at it and laugh. You'll still catch blackfish, you'll still catch redfin, yellowbelly, macquarie perch, whatever. You'll still catch them on worms, but trout are different. Trout are quite smart. Trout are very smart. They should have called them Robbie fish. That's how smart they are. <laughs> no, but seriously, folks, trout are quite smart. And if, if trout, if worms are not occurring naturally in the environment, you're not likely to catch trout on worms. This time of the year, there's still quite a few crickets around. It is getting late in the season for them. The things are cooling down. There's not as many as there was three or four weeks ago, but there are still quite a few around, and the trout will be feeding on them. So I'll put crickets on. If I come up here in September, when the creeks are high and clear, we've had a lot of rain, or they might even be dirty, and I chuck on a bunch of worms, I'll catch trout. If I put a cricket on, I probably won't, because they're not there. They're not there until after Christmas, until the autumn, which is now. So I'm going to use a cricket because they're there. So I can pretty safely say they're going to be feeding on crickets at the moment. I'm not going to use a sinker of any kind. I'll just run. I've got four pound Maxima Ultra Green line. I've got a nice long stiff rod. That's my wild bait stick. In most of my trout and redfin fishing videos, I've got two different sorts of rods that I mainly use. I've got this one here, which is my wild bait stick. It's six foot long and it's quite stiff. It's quite firm, six foot long. It's a graphite rod and it casts a long way. My other rod is my Akuma Micro Spin. It's only five foot and it's a bit whippy. It's great fun for flicking into the tight little corners in the creeks and stuff, but it doesn't cast as far as the long wild bait stick. I'm not using a split shot sinker today. I'm just going to have a hook with a cricket on it. So this longer rod will allow me to cast it further, whether it's underarm or overarm, it will allow me to get the cricket out a bit further. And it will also allow me to reach over blackberries and stuff like that. When drifting unweighted bait like I will be today, you can sometimes walk up to the top of the pool, which is a bit unstandard for most trout fishermen that like to walk up from the back. But some holes, due to being too deep to walk through, or in this case too overgrown, you can just drop your line in at the front, allow your cricket to drift in the pool, and having a longer rod just allows it to reach out further over vegetation and stand back a bit from the edge. So a longer rod is desirable for this sort of fishing. I've got my wild bait stick, my Shimano Stratic CI4 2500, which matches this rod absolutely perfectly. Very expensive reel, at close to 300 bucks a shot, but well worth it, and I swear by them. It's rigged up with four pound Maxima Ultra Green monofilament line. I prefer monofilament over braid any day of the week when using an egg beater reel, or just any light reel in general. And I will tie this to a small hook. I don't know the size, I don't need to know the size. I'll just have a look at it and say, that one will do. The size is about a centimetre and a half. 
<laughs> I don't know, size 8 I think, maybe a 10, something like that. Now I'm not going to be using any sinker today. Because there's not much current, I can get away with fishing my bait unweighted. In September and October when there's still plenty of water around and I'm fishing with worms, I usually cramp on one or two little split shot sinkers that will allow me to cast it out and it'll allow the, the worms to get down to the bottom where the fish are likely to be feeding. This time of the year there's not much current. So say your hole is, or pool is, you know, six foot long, or say two or three metres long. When there's a lot of water rushing through, a bunch of worms without a split shot will be through the hole without even getting near the bottom. This time of the year when the waters, the flow is so low, I can cast an unweighted bait to the top, in this case a cricket, and it'll have ages to make its way to the bottom before it gets to the, to the bottom end of the hole. And it will look more natural. Naturally, crickets do not float, but they do not sink either. Well, they do sink, but they sink at a very, very, very slow rate. Just this, the hook weight alone may just speed up that sink and make it look a little bit unnatural, but it should be okay. But if I am worried about that, what I can do is get some fat or some line grease, gink. What's that one? Mucilin or mucilin or metamucil or something. You can rub some of that on the line near the hook and that'll help the line float and prevent it from sinking as fast. I'm not that fastidious. But that's a big word, I bet that shocked you, didn't it? I bet you didn't think I knew words that big. I'm not that fussy, folks. I'm just going to tie one hook. I'm going to put the cricket on. It doesn't have to be rigged up any special way. As long as it's on the hook, that's, that'll do me. I'm not pedantic. And I'll cast it into a hole and I'll just see if a trout will come and grab it. Line, hook, no sinker, cricket. Let's go and see if I can put this theory to work. A few black cockatoos up there. I love them. Tell you what, just lately I'm getting into a few essential oils. I'm looking after my health. I'm seeing the positive benefits of essential oils. They've got to be natural, 100% natural. Some of them are good for your sinuses, some are good for your hay fever and allergies, some are just a general calming agent, some of them are very good in other areas, uplifting. But I tell you what, no essential oil or no medication of any kind can replace just being out here in the great outdoors. The natural smells, listening to that, uh, those black cockatoos up in the tree there singing, no tablet or no oil can replace that, folks. That's just wonderful. Here comes some more. You might see him go past if we're lucky. Look at this. G'day, fellas. Look at that. Oh, black cockatoos that are sitting right above me. Let's go and see if I can catch a trout. I hate fishing downstream, but there's really no other option in this particular pool. He's taking a cricket. Got him. Ha <laughs> Oh, you son of a bitch. Fishing downstream and a decent fish hit my cricket. Oh, I can see a big trout. Well, not a big trout, but I can see a trout. Can the trout see my cricket? He's near it, he's near it, he wants it. Has he got it? No, he's coming back. He's coming back. Has he got it? No. He wants it. Take it. Oh, he looked at it. There he goes. Right now, there's something feeding on the surface around the corner here. There's something rising. There goes a trout. Back of it. I just spooked one. Very, very hard fishing, folks. There's fish rising, but they're playing hardball in the biggest possible way. Be lucky if I get that back. I'm lucky. I've got it back. Oh, there's a take, there's a take. Got him. He <laughs> got him in a tree, he took me into a tree. Finally hooked one, took me into a tree. Oh, there's another one still rising. There's still fish in here. If I'm quiet, I might get a second go at this hole. Come out of there without making too much noise. What a disaster. What a disaster. Right, I know there's more fish in this hole. Something rose after I hooked that fish. 
I've got one cricket left. And that pin in through the back wings, just below the wings. He is still very much alive. God, there's still movement in the hole. I haven't completely blown it yet. Here comes a big one, a big one. Take it. He's quite a good fish. Wow. Two of them. Whoa, look at the size of that one. Here comes a big one, here comes a big one. Take it, take it, take it, big fish. He swam straight past it. A big brown trout of approximately two pound just swam past my my cricket. Oh, let's take, got him. Oh, yes, it's a good fish. He's a good fish. Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what we come for on the live cricket. Have a look at this fish. He is a doozy. He is an absolute ripper on the live cricket. Mate, you're a good two or three pounds. <laughs> wow. This is one of the biggest fish that I've actually seen take my bait from my YouTube channel. I don't know how I'm going to land him. I wet my hand. It's times like this I really wish I bought a landing net, folks, because look at the size of this fish. My hand is wet. I can't afford to give this fish any slack right now. Look at that. Just in case he gets off, let's have a look at this big fish. Look at that for a brown trout, folks. Does it get much better than that? A good old-fashioned two or three pounder. Taken on the cricket. Taken on the cricket. That fish is probably a good 55 centimetres long. Well, I put him on the nice damp ground. And I am absolutely stoked. I haven't got my digital SLR, but I've got my latest mobile phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy. Get the hook out of his mouth. Right, hey, folks, look at that for a big brown trout, eh? He's just been videoed, he's been caught on a cricket. He took the cricket off the surface. Now, big fella, go ahead and spawn, mate. Go ahead and spawn. Here he goes, he's getting a bit of strength back in him. Here he goes, he wants to go. He's getting ready to go, folks, there he goes. Whoa, ha, ha. It doesn't get much better than that. It does not get much better than that, folks. A good two to three pound brown trout, somewhere in the 50 centimetre size, caught drifting a live cricket into a hole. He took it off the surface the moment it hit the water. That is just pure excitement, and I am pumped. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more videos. And thank you to Samsung Galaxy S7 because I left my digital SLR in the car and that takes wonderful photos. Got him. Aha! Look at that. He came out from under those snags. Lovely little brown trout. Oh, he got off. I was just about to reach down and grab him. And he had other ideas. I'm not having much luck today with actually landing these fish, but the one that I did land was the big one. Now that fish took the striped tiger froglet, a black striped tiger froglet. I've run out of crickets, so I've put on this striped tiger froglet in black and gold, just because it looks like a cricket or a frog, just something small and black. And it's worked, I've had a couple of fish hit it now. I've also had a couple of fish get off. <laughs> nice deep little hole this one. Something's following it. Got him. Yeah, baby. Not a bad fish either. I 
Well, I've landed one and lost about five today. Let's see if I can land this one. He's hooked pretty well on the corner of the lip. What a magnificent brown trout. Look at that. Just pegged in the side of the lip there with the stri tiger froglet. Right, I swallow and hook him. Bit of blood there because he's come through the nose. What a beautiful brown trout. See ya, buddy. Off he goes. A bit groggy, but he'll be right. I'm using this tree in front of me here for cover. I'd love nothing more than to walk in front of that tree and make a big long cast, but I'll blow my cover. So I'll get a couple of casts in from the back first, but then I'll move up. Now I'll move up. Who knows? The trout might think I'm a deer. Even though I haven't got antlers on my head, something's following. That got him! Yeah! Only a little fella. That's a bloody red fin. I'll be buggered, eh? Look at that chasing trout. And I've caught this lovely little red fin on the strike tiger froglet. Not many of them in this creek. They've never really taken off. You get the odd one here and there. 